Have you ever wondered what the most effective ab exercise is with zero equipment? Clearly I have because I made a video about it. I'm willing to bet when you heard that question, you thought of at least one of these exercises. These are four of the most common ab exercises and you probably see them every single time you go to the gym. It's important to know which one is the best. So stick around and you'll find out too after we do some science. But remember, science is more than reading abstracts. Welcome back to the same place as last time. My name is Nikki and this is QED Fitness and today we are going to have a look at a study that appeared in the European Journal of Applied Physiology. The aim of the study was to compare those four exercises against each other and determine which was the most effective. The four exercises that they looked at were the crunch, which is trunk flexion, the sit up, which is hip flexion, the leg raise, which is also hip flexion, and then something called spontaneous flexion. Spontaneous flexion was when the participants were told to do a sit up with no further cueing pretty much what happens in the gym every day. The reason why the inclusion of spontaneous flexion was so important is because oftentimes when people try to do sit-ups or hip flexion, they are actually getting a combination of both trunk and hip flexion, which different muscles are responsible for. So how are they gonna figure out which one is the best? They use something called EMG, which is electromyography or just measuring the electrical activity in muscles. The more electrical activity means the stronger the contraction. The researchers inserted the electrodes into three muscles, the external obliques, the internal obliques, and the rectus abdominis or six pack. So let's have a look at the results. Here they are. Thanks science, looks good. What does it mean? If we just change the letters down at the bottom to the actual exercises, it'll make a little bit more sense. Then on the vertical axis, it is just a measure of the intramuscular electrical activity. And the three graphs from top to bottom are the rectus abdominis, the external oblique, and the internal oblique. All right, so let's start from the right, which is the leg raise. We can see that it didn't perform very well against the other exercises. So what we can get from that is, the answer to the best ab exercise is certainly not a leg raise. Now, if we compare the two middle columns, we have hip flexion and spontaneous flexion. The results here are almost identical. So let's just stick with hip flexion being better because look at the graph, it is. And then we have the last one, which is on the left, which is a bit weird, but anyway. These are probably two of the most common ab exercises that you will see in the gym. Let's take a step back and look at the entire picture. The sit up or hip flexion has more activity in the internal obliques. Across both the sit up and the crunch, abdominal activity was virtually identical. The major difference between these exercises was the activity of the external obliques. At this point, you'd be forgiven for thinking that the sit-up is better than the crunch in all ways. I'll show you why that is not the case and why we can't take EMG readings as the final answer on the efficacy of an exercise. First of all, remember what I said at the start. A crunch is a movement called trunk flexion and a sit-up is a movement called hip flexion. It comes down to this. The rectus abdominis is responsible for trunk flexion and the external obliques, when they contract together, are responsible for or hip flexion. So now if we have another look at hip flexion or sit-ups, you will see that my abs are not actually changing length in the movement. So what we have in the sit-up is that your external obliques are contracting isotonically, which is the muscle changing length as you contract. And we also have the rectus abdominis contracting isometrically or contracting without movement. For strength gains and hypertrophy or muscle growth, isotonic is better every single time. Because your rectus abdominis is contracting isometrically in this movement, that is the reason why your abs burn in a sit-up. Essentially, if we're talking about rectus abdominis, there is not a lot of difference between a plank and a sit-up. The reason is because your abs are contracting isometrically in each movement. They are not changing length as the contraction continues. So now let's look at some crunches. I kind of led you into this, but in the crunch or trunk flexion, my abs are changing length. I'm telling you, so it must be important. It matters because of the force length relationship of a muscle. When a muscle cell or sarcomere is either over lengthened or over shortened, its force producing capabilities are diminished. When the muscle cell is at its normal length, it's no surprise that we see normal contraction levels. Simply put, the muscle cell must contract harder to achieve the same level of force production at either extreme. Let's compare the sit-up and the crunch against each other using the pros and cons. For the sit-up, we have an increased level of external oblique activation and a high level of rectus abdominis activation. And the cons? Well, we're not sure if the oblique thing is a good thing and the contraction in rectus abdominis is isometric. And now, the crunch. The pros are, we also got a high level of rectus abdominis contraction. But with the crunch, we did not see the large levels of external oblique contraction. We were contracting the muscle at different lengths, all of which were isotonic contractions or contracting as the muscle moves. And what are the cons of the crunch? They are 
I don't think we have any. So now, after a little bit of critical thinking, we know that the crunch is better than the sit-up, the leg raise, and that thing called spontaneous flexion. So this is why it's important to actually read the entire scientific study. Otherwise, if you went on the abstract, we would still think that the sit-up was the best ab exercise simply because of the EMG readings. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, subscribe for more. My name is Nikki. this is QED Fitness, and I'll catch you next time.